There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between radio and bar talk, between commentary and recaps, and it lies between the pit of man's Netflix subscriptions and the summit of his binge-watching ability. This is the dimension of podcasting and the Twilight Zone. These are the Zonisodes. And now your hosts, Brandon Davis and Scott McFarland. Hello everyone out there in podcast land. Welcome to the Front Row Movie Reviews, the podcast for people who actually like movies and sometimes TV. Uh, we are here for another episode of Zonisodes, our retrospective of every single Twilight Zone episode from the 50s and 60s. And we're here for episode number 12, What You Need. With me today, as always, is... Brandon Davis, and this is our last episode from the 50s. Yes, we're moving headlong into yeah. the wonderful 60s. Bring your weed and LSD. Here we come. <laughs> uh, we still got the Kennedy years to go, so that won't be. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Frickin' Cuba. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, as usual, I'll go ahead and start out with a synopsis, sure. and then, uh, Brandon, you go ahead and tell us what Rod had to say. But mm -hmm. uh, Padot, or Old Man, as everyone calls him throughout the episode, is a street salesman. Now, where have we seen this before? Who has the uncanny ability to provide people exactly what they need. A washed-up baseball player gets a ticket to his next job. A girl at the bar gets cleaning supplies. Uh, oh. <laughs> <sighs> we'll talk about it. And our antagonist, Fred Renard, gets scissors to save him from a very slow-moving elevator. A fountain pen that picks a winner. And slippery shoes that get him hit by a car. You see, the shoes were what Padot needed, because Fred was destined to kill Padot. Oh, and he gives some other dude a comb, because he has bad hair. Yeah. The end. <laughs> yeah. So, so Brandon, uh, can can Rod help us out with this plot a little bit? Let's see. Maybe you're, looking, you're looking at Mr. Fred Renard, who carries on his shoulder a chip the size of the national debt. This is a sour man, a friendless man, a lonely man, a grasping, compulsive, nervous man. This is a man who has lived 36 undistinguished, meaningless, pointless, failure-laden years, and who at this moment looks for an escape. Any escape, any way, anything, anybody to get out of the rut. And this little old man is just what Mr. Renard is waiting for. In the Twilight Zone. Oh. <laughs> what I find interesting, this is the first time that, um, well... It depends on what your definition of a protagonist is, but this is the first time Rod opens up the episode with the person we're not going to be rooting for. Um, yeah, uh, he didn't. He didn't talk about Pado. He talked about Fred, and I just yeah. kind of found that interesting. That Pado is more of the MacGuffin or plot point, uh, mm -hmm. and Fred is the person we're following for better or worse. So, Brandon, what'd you uh, think of this episode? What's your initial reaction? Uh, this was an episode I hadn't. Um, I hadn't seen. Um, and so I, I went in not knowing what to expect. And when I first, when I first saw the plot and, and as it kind of unfolded, I thought, well, this is interesting, but I think, I, I think because the main character is kind of like what we dealt with in escape clause, our, you know, the protagonist is kind of unlikable. It's kind of hard to, to really sort of say I was rooting for anybody in this episode because even Pado, even though he's this little charming old guy um is is still still not quite the most likable character either so i i think the the twist at the end which we'll get to i think is creative and i i i, I appreciated it and i liked it and everything and i do think that the uh the, the whole gist of the episode is interesting i i feel like there's little bits of other episodes we've seen before like one for the angels and you know a few other a few other kind of episodes but uh but it's um it's it's an interesting episode though i it's not not my favorite but you know it, it's not terrible either <laughs> it's not bewitching it's not, pool. no <laughs> i'm all about foreshadowing bewitching pool yeah um no i and uh, i forgot escape clause so my whole little oh. opening there is thrown out the window but yeah oh. you're right escape clause he did it too um for me uh i i have seen this one upteen times 
yeah. because this is one of the ones that's on standard rotation and syndication. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's not to bury the lead at all, but it's it's an average episode. I mean, uh, it's got a, it's got an interesting twist, um, and the characters are okay. I think what um, what why it doesn't stand out to me as a really good episode is. You're right. All of the characters are kind of drive-by. Um, Pado, as I mentioned, is kind of more of a plot point than he is a person. Uh, Fred, even though he were, we're supposed to not like him, he really is just kind of a schmuck and not really much to write home about. And the other folks in the bar, we don't get enough time with them. I mean, uh, Lefty is kind of the most uh, interesting character, and he is shuffled off onto a bus five, mm -hmm. ten minutes into the episode. So it's just kind of... Um, you know, it, it, Rod said in an interview uh, once that um, he had about a third were really good episodes, a third were okay episodes, and a third were not either one of those. And I think we're in an okay episode. Yeah. Uh, so, Brandon, what what are some of the things that uh, that you did like about the episode? Uh, I, as as I mentioned before, I like the I like the setup. I do um, I, I do think it's kind of interesting that this guy has exactly what is needed in the moment although when you look at something it's it's kind of ridiculous or maybe sexist even at times uh, <laughs> when we uh, you know when you end up giving a girl cleaning supplies uh, but, uh, uh, like i said last week it's sexist and not even that not only does he give her cleaning supplies but then they completely fail the Bactyl test, which, in, for those who may not know, Bactyl test is, uh, in order to pass the Bactyl test, you have to have at least two female characters, which obviously this fails right away. But those two female characters have to have a conversation with each other, and it cannot be about a man. So think about how many movies you can think of and, that actually pass that. Not many. And and if you look at the cast list of this episode, she doesn't. Everyone has a name except her. She is Girl in Bar. <laughs> <laughs> there are many girls in bars out there, and some of them have names, and some of them do not. Uh, but no, I mean, and what I was gonna say, not only does she get the cleaning supplies, but it's not even something that she needs. Okay, yeah. you know, it's the scissors save your life. The bus ticket gets you to your next job. The comb makes you look pretty for it's, TV. It's the, it's used in service for Lefty. Yes! The cleaning <laughs> supply is to make sure he looks good. What? What? Damn you, 50s. Damn you. <laughs> okay, sorry. Continue. But no, it's... Uh, it's like I said, though, even though even though these characters kind of leave you cold, the the circumstances that surround everything are interesting, and um, it's it's interesting to see characters that aren't necessarily likable interacting with each other. You know, in in Escape Clause, you basically had David Wayne's character, and everyone else were kind of just schmucks who got in his way. But everybody in this, you, you know, seeing Pado interact with Renard, and they're both kind of not necessarily incredibly likable characters it's interesting to see them interact um but i well like i said you know the the, the twist at the end for me is the best part of the episode um uh, which i'm sure we'll get to um a little later but i did like Ernest. i think his name's Ernest true it's spelled t-r-u-e-x so i Ernest true i did like his performance as padot because it's not your stereotypical little old guy with the gleam in his eye edwin kind of performance it was uh it, it it was very it was very individual it's one that you don't see very often so i give him props for that yeah i can agree with that he but he he does kind of strike me as kind of a grandfather type yeah like you know just a, a guy who's gonna sit there on his uh, rocking chair and tell you about the olden days um, but he's but he's he's not clarence from it's a wonderful life he's not no, one of these little yeah. little cute old guys that come and you know say a little smart remark every once in a while or whatever he's he's an interesting character that's got his own agenda agreed agreed and you know so here's a question and i i, I maybe there is an easy answer i just was trying to think of something philosophical for this episode mm -hmm. uh is pado seeing the future or is he causing things to happen to fit into what uh so is he shaping destiny or is he seeing destiny is what I'm getting at. 
I think he shapes destiny a little bit more because I th I don't think because I don't think he sees what's coming at the end um, necessarily. Or maybe he sees what's coming, but he doesn't know how it's going to affect him. I, I think I think that was my thought too for two reasons. One, who carries yeah. a bus ticket to Scranton in their their set of wares? That's kind of really yeah. oddly specific. But then also uh -huh. too, he doesn't say I, I got you slippery shoes because I needed you to get hit by a car, which I knew was yeah. going to happen. He says I saw in your eyes the first time we met at the bar that you were going to kill me. Yeah. So he doesn't know how he's going to kill him. He doesn't know when. He doesn't know how to get out of it. He just knows that for some reason these shoes are the way to get it done. So, yeah, I, I think that's how I see it too. Yeah. The it's, one, um, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, and also um, Steve Cochran's performances as Renard. I mean, it, it, like I said, I kind of have to give props to him because he could have been, you know, just your typical gruff, rough guy persona, but he actually does every once in a while give Renard, you know, a little bit of, a, a little bit of humanity, a little bit of vulnerability sometimes, you know, he's not always just this stereotypical gruff guy, you know, I, I, I do like the character of Renard better than I like the character in Escape Clause, you do feel for him at times, you know, you're not, you're not totally upset when he gets hit by a car like when in Escape Clause, he dies of a heart attack. Yeah, and I think, yeah, and I think part of that is his situation in life. Uh, yeah. The guy in Escape Clause was just an overall dick and a selfish piece of yeah. shite. Uh, yeah. But uh, with with Fred, it's more of – and Rod even says this too in his opening. He's more just a down-on-his-luck guy. Nothing's ever gone yeah. right for him. Obviously, it's never gone right for him because he's a selfish prick. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, if at 36 years old, which uh, neither of us are too far away from that – we're sitting at a bar, not knowing what the hell to do with our lives. Um, we may be kind of prickish too. We would be. Yeah, I, I, I would probably bet the more horses than one and win more money than that. But <laughs> there's a system. I got it. Um, Did you like that Lefty had a club, a Cubs connection? Absolutely. Yeah. That was the best part of the episode. <laughs> and it's the 1950s Cubs, so Lefty probably was one of the best players when they ditched him. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, 50, 50s and early 60s Cubs is nothing to write home about. Late 60s, yeah. good. Early 80s, good. Everything else in between, eh, not so much. <laughs> but I, I did prepare. So yeah. for those listening to the audio podcast, you can't see my shirt, but I am wearing a Cubs shirt. Um, the first place, world champion Cubs. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, but no, I I, I think uh, again. I think the what worked for me is Lefty. I think if the episode was about Lefty, I'd be much happier uh, yeah. because he's a, he's a character who is down in his luck, but he's a nice guy, and uh -huh. he just needs a turn of fate to save the day for his life. You uh -huh. know, the the bartender points out he's there every night, a, every day a week, um, uh, and uh, he just uh, is waiting for something else to happen. He needs another left arm or whatever, so forth and so on. Uh, but it just kind of goes with the the whole idea is, is a one one coincidence or one connection can change everything for somebody. There's a story right there for that. I'm sure there's probably 15 episodes about it down the road. Uh, but I, I think that's something that uh, worked for me. Uh, I, 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 I like I liked Pado's uh, just the character of him too, but again, I think he was more of uh, moving the plot along more so than kind of getting into a person. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the things that you didn't uh, much care for? Um, the, you know, I, I think it, it starts off really strong in the bar, and then it ends really strong with with all the stuff on the street at the end. But I feel like that that middle scene between the two of them, you know, you know, during the whole you know this thing with the pen and the racetrack, it goes on for a little long. I feel like you know, and I I I, I just I don't think that they are. They're good actors, but I don't think the characters are compelling enough to really sort of hold you for, for that long of a time. But um, like I said, though, I don't think there's really anything in particularly terrible or wrong about this episode. I just think we've seen, we've seen and we're going to see better in every way. So the, the episode just kind of, as we mentioned, it's, it, it's sort of an, sort of an average episode. Um, I, I don't know if, if maybe if, if it had been cast differently or something, if it would stand out to me, like I said, you know, you really like lefty in the beginning and, and you have this really, really likable 
character and then when he leaves you're like oh who do i have to root for now in this episode and so it's kind of like you're more you're more just a fly on a wall than a participant in this episode there's no one left to sort of put yourself you know in their shoes or to root for i agree with that uh, and the, and the, the the twist ending is is interesting and good and i think that kind of helps the episode along the one thing i would have liked to see is uh there's a lot of repetition it's always what yeah. you need what here's what you yeah. need 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 and he's always talking about shoelaces he's asking everyone if they need shoelaces and since the episode ends with a shoe situation you're probably yeah. thinking and again i've seen this 15 million times so i wasn't but i'm probably the first time i was thinking well this is going to have to do with shoelaces you know he's always been trying to hawk these shoelaces and this guy's going to have his you know his shoelaces undone he's going to get himself killed or something yeah. So I think if, I think just the kind of that narrative connection would have been just kind of a nice little flare at the end. Uh, yeah. But what didn't work for me is you know as I already mentioned kind of the the very shallow characters not so much shallow shallow in personality but mm -hmm. shallow in uh, in narrative depth. There's not much to yeah. them. Uh, it's just, you know, you get what you get. These guys are here to move a plot along. The other thing I didn't like is something that you just mentioned, too, and there's a lot of filler in this episode. Yeah. And you can tell this was probably a 15-minute story that Rod had to get to 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, when he runs off to go win at the horse race and he's has the bed full of 100 bucks or whatever that is, if the dude knows it's knows a short, sure thing, he needed to bet more money on that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it gets even more goofy at the end. I mean, the the episode's over. Uh, Fred's lying dead in the street. Pado walks off, and then these two Beverly Hillbillies, I guess, come out, and one doesn't have his hair combed, and uh, Pado gives him a comb. And you're like, okay, maybe this is something you know. Much like I love how the episode last that week kind of left itself open. I'm thinking, yeah. okay, well, we'll never know what the comb's for. It, it, who knows? No, it's because he's got to look pretty for TV. I'm like, really? Yeah. That's how we're going to end the episode? Slick your hair back? That, just, yeah. that strikes me as you needed three more minutes, and you didn't know where to come up with three minutes, so this is what you did. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of you know, now we're, we're, we're at episode 12. We're in the middle of the season. We've got, you know, we've had really strong episodes. We've got really strong episodes to come, and then we're kind of sort of in this sort of middle slumper period now. Although we, although we just ended with a stronger episode beforehand, but um, I just feel like, you know, Rod's kind of putting all of his more average stuff here in the middle of the season, probably. But um, yeah, it, it ebbs and flows too. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Here, here's the one thing we you know we kind of joked about production uh, money and how there was only two sets in the last one. This one has a uh, it, it has a couple more sets and it also has a streetscape and it looks like they're either on a back lot or they're shooting yeah. on some kind of actual street. I point that out because the next episode it looks like they ran out of money because <laughs> when he's on the street it actually, honest to God, we'll talk about more next week. Mm -hmm. There is a cardboard cut out of a doorway and some neon signs, and that is the streetscape. I don't understand from one episode we actually have like cobblestone streets and it looks real to neon signs and cardboard. I don't understand the I don't I don't well, get it. Well we'll talk about it next week. We'll get into it more. I think some of that next week is a creative choice, but I'll explain it more what I think next week. But. This is why I don't direct, because I have no creativity. <laughs> I just want my brick. <laughs> okay well but, brandon um go ahead do you have anything else you want to add for what you didn't care for no no i was uh, li like you mentioned that was the you mentioned something that i really wasn't able to verbally come up with until now after i heard you say it but um yeah when the whole thing with the comb you know i thought you know we just had this really clever thing with the shoes and and you know Pado, you know realizing you know that he saw in his eyes that he was going to kill him from the beginning we've had that great revelation and then i feel like that whole thing with the comb kind of cheapened it i agree at the end it was just like a quick little, a quick little game i think the episode would have a much stronger um uh, would have a much stronger memory for people i think had it ended with the shoe thing and not with the comb thing 
Yeah, and, and it's perfect. You have the, the the pair of shoes that was his old pair of shoes. If he would have kept those on, he probably would have been able to yeah. kill the old man and move on with his you know worthless life. Yeah, and and you you end showing that, but I'm just like this the the doofy the goofy guy and his wife with the bad hair. It's just it's odd. It's yeah. it's worth at least a negative one point on my scale. We'll put it that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Brandon, what are your uh, kind of closing thoughts on what you need? Um, like I said, average average episode. Um, I'm still teetering on where to place it on the on my you know, scale. We'll get to that in a little bit. But um, you know, we've we've seen much stronger. We've seen. We've seen some worse. Um, it's not going to be my lowest scored episode. I'll, I will preview that. But um, it, you know, it's 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 a fine you know fine outing. It's a it's a clever story that I feel like, as you said, could have been told in a much shorter time and just had required lots of filler and um, you know st stuff that it didn't need. And so I think it suffers because there's not enough meat to it. I think, I think all the meat that there is could fill up probably 12 minutes, yeah. but, um, but, but from the, the strength of the episode is good and it is strong and I did enjoy it, but I think the filler cheapens it. Yeah, I know. I ditto on everything you just said. It's a very short episode that was extended out. Uh, the characters um, aren't really fleshed out, and it kind of makes it weak. Um, the 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 saving graces for it is the the the, the kind of the the cute twist at the end, and uh, Pado's uh, kind of character for me is what uh, keeps it going. Yeah. So with that, we'll go ahead and give our scores. Uh, as always, uh, we give a score of 1 to 10, and it's based on uh, other Twilight Zone episodes. So a 5 is an average Twilight Zone episode, a 10 is an amazing, the best Twilight Zone episode ever, and a 1 is Bewitching Pool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, Brandon, where would you put what you need? I said what you need was an average episode, which for us is a 5, but... I put one for the angels as a five and I think one for the angels is a better episode. I'm going to give this one a four. Oh, uh, I, I'm going to, for one, I probably should go back and keep track of all my scores better. So I knew where I was, uh, <laughs> but cause I have no idea where I put one for the angels. <laughs> By uh, the time we get to season three, I won't be able to keep track. But yeah, for now I, am. <laughs> I, I lose track after episode five. You, you got some more on me, but, uh, I, I'm going to say that, uh, much like you, I think this is an average episode to a fact to where I'm going to give it probably a five. Uh, <laughs> if the characters were a little stronger, if uh, uh, it was a little tighter narratively, I would probably give it a six just because I do like the the ending and I, I do like Pado um, and how I, I really I just like the actor. He just is very yeah. kind of gentlemanly to me, and I like that. Yeah. Um, and also, I, the, the, again, I, the, there, there's a lot of cheap character stuff in here that just kind of um, makes it an average episode. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to give it a five. Uh, All right. So that will end our conversation once we have Rod in this out. So go ahead and yeah. finish up with Rod there, and then we'll All do right. our plugging. Street scene, night, traffic accident, victim named Fred Renard, gentleman with a sour face to whom contentment came with difficulty. Fred Bernard, who took all that was needed in the Twilight Zone. And I will say, I've had leather shoes before. Those bastards will get you killed. <laughs> They're they a little slippery. They're a little slippery. Yeah. Uh, so you can find us at thefrontrowmoviereviews.com. Uh, and if you're checking us out on your audio podcast, wherever that may be, please be sure to give us a review and a rating. Uh, rate us up there so we can show up in some search engines and more people can check us out. If you're checking us out on YouTube, please make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, we've got plenty more episodes to go uh, to a tune of 144 more to go. So you, there's plenty of time to check out what we're talking about. And uh, we always want to hear from you too. So email us at thefrontrowmoviereviews at gmail.com. Let us know what your favorite episodes were. Let us know if we were on track with what you think about this episode or let us know if uh, you can't stand us. We'd like to hear that too. I love your hate mail. <laughs> I bask in your hate. <laughs> Brandy, you have anything else you want to close us out with? Um, not, not really. We've got, we've got an interesting episode coming up next week. I'm looking forward to talking about it. Yes. 
Clayface from Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. All right, and with that, we'll go ahead and close things out. So until next time, I am Scott McFarland. And I am Brandon Davis. And we will see you on the couch. Adios. Thank you for listening to this episode of Zonisodes. Zonisodes is a special presentation of the Front Row Movie Reviews podcast. For more information, go to www.thefrontrowmoviereviews.com.